Okay, this is a lightning talk, so I'm gonna try and do it super quick. This is a talk presented by Jesse Harlan, and if you don't know me, um, I uh, started OKCJS with Vance a long time ago, and I've been gone for a while, and I'm happy to be back here giving a lightning talk. So, this is the song of my people. So, right off the bat, just because someone's gonna be like, what about the audio? So, yes, for simple stuff, use the audio tag, because it's very simple and it's very easy. Uh, you just drop it on the page, it's declarative, it'll make a native player for you, and you can sort of customize it. And by sort of customize it, I mean what you actually do is you make the art out of HTML and you attach a bunch of JavaScript events, it's not like you can style it with CSS, but still, uh, you can go to JPlayer and get a bunch of skins and stuff like that. And this is what it, this is what it really looks like. So I'm gonna open up some totally sweet music. It's my jams. There you go. All right, that's the end of my lightning talk. Thanks for coming. Just kidding. It could be the end. That might be the most of what people would do with this stuff. Okay, so my next talk is actually about a protocol. It's like consider MIDI when you normally wouldn't. So this is mainly uh, probably in the context of like creative applications or like machine to machine communication. Um, it's a really simple protocol. Um, unlike a lot of things like game pads and stuff like that, it has velocity information. So if you're like doing installations or anything like that, or you're doing art, that actually is a really expressive parameter, how hard or how much velocity something has. Um, it's had browser support since 2015, so it's relatively new. Um, you can use it for like lighting and machinery, like you can like, you know, control a printer with it if you want to, it's really not that difficult. People have done just about everything you can do with it. Um, and you know what version of MIDI we're on? We're on version one. It was invented a year before I was born. Yes, I am an old. But it is older, and that is how you know it is a relatively stable and reusable protocol. And if you want to know how to use it, this is the MDN docs for it, and I've got some other examples of non-traditional examples here. Moving on, point number, ah, yeah. And then I just have a. Oh, um, I, I will tell you this. MIDI does not work in iframes, so if I want to actually play this thing, I have to go to websense.com, so my little MIDI controller isn't really doing it. But just heads up, you can do it. Um, another thing, a little mini pro tip, is when you do hook up your MIDI, gather all the MIDI inputs. Um, I see a lot of code and a lot of examples out there Well, they'll, they'll just grab the first controller that they see, and if you are using MIDI in earnest, there's probably lots of them, so your code should be like this. Like, get them all. Get all the MIDI inputs. And there's, uh, on the uh, MIDI access object, there's a lot more properties, a lot more cool things you can do. Okay, use Tone.js for sound generation. There's a lot of things out there you can use in HTML5 audio for generating sound. Tone.js is probably like the best one. And that one don't, won't load in my iframe, but here's one of the more compelling examples. It's called Solar Beat. You can like make music based upon the rotation of the, uh, the planets. So it's just a really cool example of, uh, let's see, how do I go back? Oops, let's go back to slides.com. By the way, all my decks up to this point are on slides.com. This is definitely part of the talk. Okay. So use HowlerJS for playback. HowlerJS is the best library in the world for managing the actual playback of sound, in my personal opinion. Uh, and it was developed right here in beautiful Oklahoma City by James Simpson, Benji K, and I think Ben worked on it some, and as well as other people, people all over the world. Um, it does literally everything you want to do in terms of actually playing back your sound and having spatial audio and just managing your assets. So that's cool. Um, then, if you're using Howler, you should use sound sprites. Uh, so what sound sprites are is uh, much like you would like take all your images and pack them into a, a sprite sheet or something like that. It allows you to go get all of your sounds in a single request. Makes you have one big sound file and you keep time code information. Use that to jump around. So here's the example. Five, four, all right. So this sound is split into multiple pieces. You can trigger multiple ones. So that's how that works. So there you go. Um, 
if you have been doing audio in the browser for a long time, you know that there's been like format wars for a long time. Like there was a time when Firefox would not play MP3s, uh, Chrome would play MP3s, like some, some things would load Og Vorbis. You could always do wave fallbacks. So what do you do right now? Well, if you go to like any site that's like loading sound in the uh, browser, you're gonna see a table that looks like this. And it's gonna be like, should I use MP3? Should I use wave? Should I use Og? But surprise, it's WebM with an MP3 fallback. And that is like not something I would have thought to do, but I talked to some folks I know in the area that are building video games, and actually Benji was the one that gave me this super pro tip, so hats off to Benji. Uh, so does everything load WebM? Almost everything that you care about. If you're using sound sprites, you're probably making a rich interactive experience, and everything that can load a rich interactive experience could probably load a sound sprite. And it's not like MP3 and you know the lame codec and all that stuff where there's a bunch of licensing hoo-ha where you gotta go get the codec yourself and then put it in Audacity. It's just, you can just use it. Um, it's also used for this other thing that you've probably heard of called video, <laughs> but you can use it for audio and it works great. Just make sure that you encode it with Vorbis. Number eight, make a start screen or some kind of clever first interaction. So this is one that I think I probably spent, I don't know, um, uh, 20 minutes struggling with, like trying to fire synthetic events and all this kind of stuff. It can't be done. If you want sound in your browser, um, the horrible people in ad tech have made it bad for us, and so most browsers have made it to where unless there is a willful interaction between the user and your page, before whatever it is you're gonna do happens, you will hear nothing. Which means that if you wanna make a video game with like some beautiful intro music, you really need to do some other thing where they click it first. Right? So I'll show you all this in my little example later. And then number nine, use BFXer for quick sound effects. This is like not really in the browser specifically, but hey man, you're making a video game, it's a game jam. You need a whole bunch of sound effects really fast. Um, I will say at first this offended my sensibilities because I love synthesizers and I love sound design and I thought I was cheating. And then I opened it up and I started clicking the randomize button. I'm like, hmm, that kind of sounds like a laser. Hmm, that kind of sounds like a jump. Actually, this is really fun. I feel more like an orchestra director rather than someone down in the orchestra pit. So there you go, pro tip. And then finally, um, this is me just kind of plugging my own little tool, Create Phaser App, which is my tool, uh, which is a, it's basically just a very opinionated implementation of Phaser 3 is all it is. But I have a sound processor now. Uh, and so what that looks like is you go in there and you type yarn process sounds, you dump all your sounds inside of a raw folder, it goes through, it scoops them all up. I usually keep them in Og Vorbis format when I'm just kind of letting them sit there. But then it's gonna spit out the MP3 and the WebM fallback and it's gonna even template the Howler file for you. Then you just import it and then boom, you're done. You can play stuff. And here is my example of a video game putting all these things into practice. So this is WebM, click to start screen, all that kind of stuff. You can hear my delightful synth music. All right. All the sounds were made in VFXer. Except for the music, obviously. There you go. That's my talk. Thank you for coming to my TEDx talk. All right, so this is Create Phaser App if you guys want to go play the demo, it's up right now. <laughs>